typical UK winter's day. Plenty of rain, plenty of wind. But don't worry, because we're going to step inside the warmth of the PGA Academy studio here at Carden Park. There is very much a challenge in amongst the hollow-bodied iron sector right now. And for me, in the last sort of four years, it's been the most successful type of iron that is out there. We've seen PXG, Srixen, Titlist, Mizuno, and TaylorMade all build their efforts into hollow bodied irons packed with some magic dust to make this game a little bit easier but for me the sort of top dog in terms of sales has been the tailor-made p790 they're in their third iteration right now but they've got a new kid on the block that's about to lay down a pretty impressive challenge i think it's from mizuno and it's the 225 and i'm going to put them in a head-to-head -head and see in 2022 are they really now going to be the king of the hollow body irons. Now, both of these irons claim to be sort of forged. And there's an element of forging, but I don't class them as a pure forged iron, neither of them. The success for me has been with the P790, they've made a sort of small compact profile, players almost like looking iron. That injection of speed foam in the 2021 model was a slight change up on the previous iterations, made massive advancements in terms of enhancing sound and feel. But we all know nothing feels like a Mizuno. So how have they made the new Mizuno Pro 225 any different from its predecessor? So sound and feel for me is going to be a big barometer which might split the two. Right, so that's where we'll start. Now don't forget, there's a couple of things to consider, I suppose, in my opinion. This isn't out on the course, it's in an indoor bay, so it's a slightly more echoey sound and feel. I'll start with the Mizuno. I'll let a couple of balls and I'll give you my opinion. But I think what I'll do, I'll switch, I'll alternate shots so that we've got a, a bit of an idea sound-wise between the two. And whether or not you're going to pick this up, uh, I'm not too sure. Right. Okay, so first ball, 225. What I noticed sort of straight away, and as I said on the intro, these aren't forged irons. They don't feel like forged irons for me. So that's a, we're hitting seven iron, by the way. And uh, if we want to make the same statement of the P790, let's hit one. That was a little bit heavy, so I'm gonna hit another ball. I've got a little bit of mat before ball there. Let's try that one again. It's better. Right, I'll say nothing just yet. We'll switch over and we'll try again. I'm interested to know what you're picking up. Like I said, from, uh, from the sound there, the mic obviously is way up here. So whether or not you're getting anything, I don't know, but there is, I think a slight difference. I mean, we'll get onto data very, very shortly and sort of how the ball sort of reacts off the face and it's incredible. Uh, with both clubs, not giving nothing away there. The performance out of both of them is just unreal. But in terms of sound and feel, and the other thing we're going to get onto next is the looks, and there is a difference there as well. But let's hit one more with the P790. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough one. I think. There's not a lot to split these two. There really isn't in terms of how they sound and how they feel. And the only thing I can say is that they're uh, neither sound like a forged iron to me, nor do they feel like a forged iron. It's always been the issue that I've had with this type of hollow body construction. That's not to say that I'd have an issue with playing either of them because it's not a sound and feel that's necessarily bad. So, Put that in a nutshell and not quite forged okay sound and feel but not fantastic and nothing to split either of them so what about the way these two clubs look and i've got to say both of them are i think definitely two of the best looking irons on the market right now for me the p790 they made a bit of a change in the 2021 model they dropped a bit of the chrome which i was a little bit of annoyed at and they kept it in the p770 which i perhaps prefer but either way, it is a stunning looking club, 
minimalistic in its design and all the lettering on the back has been stripped right back and it's it's a decent looking club to say the least but then you move on to the Mizuno Pro 225 and it just brings a smile to my face it is absolutely classic looking in uh, in the way it's finished I am a sucker for a bit of shiny chrome I always say that but again it's so stripped back in terms of uh, any numbering and lettering and that almost retro style um, lettering of the Mizuno Pro I think looks absolutely superb so although it is only a sort of very much a personal preference I'd have to give it to the Mizuno Pro 225 in terms of looks because I think it's the best looking club on the market right now or certainly the Mizuno Pro range at least anyway so for me, profile is key. If you're the type of golfer that's looking at potentially buying this type of club, then for me, the profile is gonna be, uh, and how it looks at a dress is gonna be a major player in the direction that you choose to go. And there are big differences. And it surprised me at the differences, to be quite honest with you. And at a dress, I've got two seven irons, I've got two nine irons, and then I've got a little bit of a curveball to throw into the equation. You can see from what you're looking at now, the 225 is a whole lot slimmed down to that of the P790 from that top line far chunkier looking club and almost puts it in a different category to what the 225 is then if you look at the nine irons it's even more sort of um, noticeable and i think if you're the type of player that's wanting the kind of uh, a player style iron with a little bit more assistance which i think is where this sort of product is aimed at then you're going to want a little bit of a slimmed down version a, a smaller more compact profile in the shorter end of the bag and that's exactly what they've done at Mizuno with the 225. And you can see in the 99 comparisons, again, quite a bit more chunky in terms of what we were looking at on the P790. And whilst I'm struggling to balance these clubs, I'll just reach down to what was the curveball that I mentioned. This video is all about a comparison between the P790 and the 225 from Mizuno. But what I've realized whilst making this video is that perhaps the P770 is now much more in line as a competitor to that of the 225. And if you look at these two seven irons at address, you'll start to see the similarities. Top line becomes similar. They're slightly different in profile, but the original Mizuno product was the MP20 HMB. And the change that they've made in terms of this Mizuno Pro 225 in terms of the profile is massive. It's a huge change. They've made them so much more smaller and compact and now like i said it falls in line with that player's iron from taylor made i think of the p770 so massive changes in profile for the mizuno pro 225. Like I said earlier on, there's no doubt these clubs both perform. That was a 225, and I'm just collecting some data because ultimately we're in here today at the PGA Academy with Trackman switched on collecting data. And that's where I think, apart from the things we've looked at already, which is looks, sound, and feel, obviously performance is a big key factor. And what I want to see from Trackman now is what does the data tell us in how these two clubs can be separated and where they can be swayed to buy one over the other. Right, so yeah, there is only one thing we need to see if we can separate these two clubs now, and that's dry ball data. So that's exactly where we'll go, but we'll start at the opposite end to where I normally do, and that is with dispersion. And as you can see, these balls that I hit, uh, I know it's seven or eight of each because it soon became apparent how these two things were gonna perform. They're pretty much on top of each other. I leaked a few out to the right with both uh, clubs, and that was very much down to my performance this morning. We go into dry ball data and we'll start with the tailor-made P790. As you can see in front of you now, we've got, uh, I'll go through the averages, 80 mile an hour club head speed, 116 ball speed, 172 carry, 21.2 launch and a peak height of 106. That's an incredible set of numbers from these irons and very much what I've seen in the past and what I've expected to see this morning. Incredibly fast ball speeds off an 80 mile an hour club head speed, a long carry that is always relative to uh, the loft. But those launch angles and peak heights, 
These clubs get the ball airborne and they get it very high indeed. And that's what they're designed to do in terms of helping us, particularly down that longer end of the bag. You then go into the 225 and again, averages for me to go through is 81.2 club head, 116 ball speed, 171 uh, carry distance, 21.3 launch, 105 peak height. They're almost identical in every category. And for me, that is really the tail of the tape, if you like, in terms of dry ball data. There is nothing to split them. And if I hit 100 shots, I think we'd find that it will be almost identical in terms of their performance. So then you're really looking at individual preferences in terms of sort of how they look, how you think they feel. Um, but also maybe one other issue to throw in, which is the price point. The bit that surprised me really is that they're looking at a bit of research. The tailor-made uh, P790 2021 version is retail at the moment at 155 a club. And we've only got the RRP price on these 225s because they're not released for sale yet at the UK, but the RRP is £200 an iron. So although they might be a little bit different when they get to retail, I still think they're going to be in that sort of £180 bracket. So there is a considerable difference in price, which might sway you towards the tailor-made P790, because at the moment, the only thing that splits them, in my opinion, is the way they look. And as I said earlier, the Mizuno Pro certainly get it in terms of a looks perspective, but in every other category, they're absolutely identical and so difficult to split. So that price difference is probably a key factor for you to bear in mind. Right, that's me done. I just got to say thank you for Carden Park for allowing us to use this uh, PGA Academy. And it's been so nice to have that heater on whilst we've been doing this testing this morning. Right, from your perspective, what I want is comments down below. Are you using P790s? Are any of you tempted by the 225s? And I suppose that one, if you're a P790 user, are you tempted to move on to the 225? So all feedback, don't forget, helps your fellow golfer, points them in the right direction. So comments down below for that. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed today's video and subscribe if you don't already. Thanks for watching. I'm off. I will see you all very, very soon.